So, a couple things before we get started. One, uh, quizzes are done, they're graded. Um, I have a couple of you still need to finish them with me or do them with me. So, um, so here, let's just give you a diagram, clear ink. So, you are right now, like here in the West Building at Cherry Creek High School. Still with me in this scenario? So right out those windows is the parking lot. So there's like a teacher parking lot and then a student parking lot. And like down here you have the gym, and the pool. And then over here you have a football field or Stutler Bowl or whatever you want to call it. You guys still with me on how this diagram is drawn? So we're talking about out that window, right? Still with me? So there is a building that is right here, and this is the admissions and career tech ed, okay? There are doors right here. So there's a couple picnic tables here. There's three of them. There's some trees. So if you walk in this side door, it always appears that it's locked. Just pull on the one on the left and it's not. Um, we always know who doesn't realize that because you hear the doorbell ring. It's like we sit there going, they'll figure it out eventually. And if you go up, as you enter the building, there's going to be looking at a stairway. Go up the stairway, and I am in Office 200. So Office 200 is on the second floor, just at the opposite side. So if you do owe me the test or the quiz, um, that's where you can come find me. Um, if you have your cell phone out, get it out right now and... 720-554-4544. That is my office number. Call me just to make sure that I'm there. Obviously, don't do it in the hallways when you're going because you don't want to get in trouble for it. But if you need to make up that quiz, come find me. Let's get that done. Um, I think we can make it, let's say, by Wednesday this week at the latest to get it made up. Because I'd like to get, I'd like to hand these back to students by Thursday, and so we can go over it. Is that okay? Make sense? Anyone confused? Okay. All right, let's run through that homework real quick. Uh, I don't need that anymore. I don't care about that. Let's go over and done that. All right. So, so I think there's the first nine worked out. And so again, if you have any questions as we're going over it, you need to write it on that backboard. Go wander on back there. Can I move off that, or is anyone still looking at that? We good? Any thumbs up? Thumbs down if I move on? Nothing? Am I waiting? Good? Thumbs up? Wait? I can't hear you. It's like talking to my wife. I can't understand what you're saying. All right, so let's talk about number 10, because I know that a couple of you, you know, you saw a little story that was given, and you're like, dude, forget about it. You shouldn't be reading it now. I get it. Uh, it says one cell phone plan costs $30 per month. Each minute costs you an additional $0.35 cents for a bill of $65.70. How many minutes did you use? And so what are you solving for? We're going to call it X. So we're going to be solving for minutes. Okay, so our variable will count for minutes. And so what I'm going to do is it says one cell phone plan costs you 30 bucks. Okay, and then you're going to pay 35 cents for every minute. Remember, this is saying that, that that's minute. Okay, and then you have a bill of $65.70. So if you set this up like this. You can then solve for how many minutes you actually use. Now, whether you use minutes or not, you're paying $30 a month regardless. So if we go in and we solve it, we start solving for x. So the first thing we do is probably subtract 30 from both sides. So, and that was that vertical line down. So 6570 minus 30 is 3570. 0.35x equals that. What did I do at this step right here to move, to get x all alone? Divided by what? Yeah, I divided by 0.35. So divide each side by 
And then if you find that, you get 102. So X is 102. So this means you used 102 minutes that month for your cell phone bill. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Good. So I think, was this one? So whoever had the question on 10B, does that make sense? Yeah. Wait, can you scroll up? Please? Scroll up? Mm -hmm. Giddy up. Real quick. Yeah. There it is. Sorry, I'm that guy. Oops. And let's do this. So whoever had the question on 10B, does that make sense how we created the equation? We took the scenario and went. <clears throat> May I, <clears throat> excuse me, move down? <clears throat> and then the next one, let's see. So here's the answers here. I had a student a couple years ago who asked me, can I just change the problems rather than using the different letters? Can I always change it to X? And I said, yeah, as long as there's just a single letter. Like if there's both X and Y in a problem, or M and N, or O and J, or something like that, don't change them both to X because they represent two different things. But if you have a single letter in there, you can change them all to X and easily solve it. Mr. Dwyer. Mr. Stroh, this is Mackenzie Kinsey. Where are you today? Hello. Let's see. Where should we put you? Mackenzie, you can sit right over here. Front seat. I swear I won't teach over by that region for you. You got it, sir. Thank you. I'll fill you in. We'll figure it all out pretty quickly. Did you, are you brand new to the school? No. No? You've been here before? <coughs> Switch classes. Oh, okay. Uh, what's your favorite color? Green, okay, favorite number? Favorite dessert? I don't really have anything wrong. I like chocolate. Oh, there's nothing wrong with that. Well, welcome to class. All right, that look okay? Can I move off that screen? All right. Um. Oh, you know what I forgot? Dang it. Clear ink. While we're thinking of this, while I'm thinking about it, get your phones out and your electronic devices. I'm sorry. I tell you, Mondays, I start forgetting everything. And then, So get your phones out. Dial into it. Hit the uh, off button, please. You can leave it out on your desk, but I just want to make sure you're off. So, you know, as well as I, your phone's vibrating in your pocket or your backpack. You got to know who's calling. Let's be a surprise at the end of class. All right. Um, let's see. Oh, should we? Let's just talk about number 13 and 14. Oh, wait. Okay. So, okay. So, number 13 says Ryan planned on spending half his weekly allowance on iPad apps. This was not enough to buy. What he wanted to so ask his parents to let him clean the gutters and earn money. After a lengthy negotiation, his parents agreed to pay him 12 bucks for the job. If Ryan spent 21 total on apps after his parents paid him for cleaning the gutters, what is his weekly allowance? Okay. Let's uh, put that down here somewhere. Okay, so X is his weekly allowance. We don't know what it is. So mom and dad said, yeah, get up on the roof, risk your life, get on that ladder that's unstable, but you gave you 12 bucks. And then he spent 21 bucks on, on the, the apps. So we're going to add 12 to X because that's going to tell us, hey, we have a certain amount we get, we're given each week. So I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides from there, and I find that he gets 9 bucks a week for allowance. Uh, number 14, though, it said, uh, for each step, state the property that's being used. So basically, sometimes you can go through and just say, hey, 
If I did 1 6 x minus 11 is equal to negative 9, if I wanted to start solving it, my first thing would be is I'm going to add a le the 11 to both sides. Okay, so that was just addition that took place. And then um, I multiplied uh, 1 6, I multiplied by 6 to get um, x all by itself. So the long and the short of this problem is basically just doing this. Um, add 11, add 11. And then I have 1 over 6x is equal to 2. Multiply both sides by 6. So those cancel out. 1x is the same thing as x. x is equal to 12. Okay. And then 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. Was 19 as far as you wanted or was more there? That's it. Sound good? So I think we did 10B okay. Um, 14, does that make sense? So basically, all you're doing on 14 is work out the problem like normal, but then you might have to state that you had to use the addition property or the subtraction property, the multiplication property or the division property. Or there was one that we talked about, like if I had 2 thirds, I'm multiplying by what in order to get 2 thirds off of each side? 3 over 2, which is called the what? Reciprocal. So sometimes you could put like reciprocal identity or something like that. Or, you know, multiply by the reciprocal. Okay? So, so 10B and 14A look good. And then let's go take care of the rest of these that are sitting up there. All right. Uh, let's see. Clearing. Let's say number 9. All right. Number 9. Number nine, we have x plus six uh, divided by two is equal to five. Okay, so a few things about this problem. One, you have a big old fraction. Is the entire x plus two in the numerator or is it broken apart? So in the one says broken apart. If you look at that, do you think x plus six is entirely on top? Or is it x over 2 and then plus 6 off to the side? Look, I've drawn my line. Does my line go under the entire portion of this? Go here. So is the whole x plus 6 on top or not? It is. So this is theoretically grouped like that. Okay, we don't have that with this problem, but being that this is on top, I have to start undoing stuff. Okay, so I have x plus 6. So let's, let's think about this. If this was just x over 2 is equal to 5, how would you solve x over 2 equals 5? What would I have to do? Yeah? Multiply 5. Multiply 5 times what? 2. 2. Okay, so you're going to multiply both sides times 2 in this scenario, so we'd get x is equal to 10, but we're... <coughs> We're putting more with that. We have an x plus 6. It's going to be the same property, though, because the entire x plus 6 is all together. So those are going to cancel out. It's going to leave me x plus 6 is equal to 10. I'm just going to cross that out just so you're not thinking that's part of the problem. And then, pretty easy from there, what do we do? Subtract the 6. I like it. Oh, I guess I should have drawn that somewhat vertical line. So I get x is equal to 4. So x equals 4 is my answer. And things you can do to plug it back in, if you plug 4 back in here, 4 plus 6 is 10. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So it will work. So that was 9. Is that okay? 16. What does this look like? That's 16? Oh, I think it's an 18. I think it's 18. Does this say 3x minus 10 is the first yeah. part of it? Okay, yeah, it's number 18. That's okay. It's one day we can all be right inside of So number 18, we have 3x minus 10 minus 5 minus 2y 
plus 6y plus 7x. Okay. Um, hey, I saw this as an error on the quiz. Okay, I saw this as an error on the quiz. Is there an equal sign there? No. So we are not solving for a letter. We're just combining like terms. If you have an equal sign, that normally would mean, hey, we need to solve it. If you don't have an equal sign, that just means you're putting the like terms together. Okay? So is there anything in front of anything in front of here that I have to distribute over? I mean, theoretically, there's a one. Would you think that would be okay to say? So I can go one times that, one times that. So that's going to give me 3x minus 10. Is that okay so far? Yeah. Okay. What should I do with the next one? I'm going to subtract. So I'm going to know what's really in front of here. A negative one. Good. So negative one gets distributed here and here. Okay. So that's the important thing is realizing that's a negative. So I'm going to get minus 5 plus 2y. See how that flip flop those signs? And then the very last thing, do, what do I have out in front? I have a plus, but what else would I have? A 1. So theoretically, the 1 gets to go over. And if I distribute a 1 over, it won't change any of the signs. So now I have some like terms. And remember, a like term is like saying apples and apples. You count up the number of apples. Or oranges and oranges. Count the number of oranges. Or cars and cars. Count the number of cars. But if you were to say apples and bicycles, you couldn't say, well, how many apples do I have if I had 15 bikes and 12 apples? You're still going to have 12 apples. The bikes won't indicate. So like terms are going to do that. So here I have a 3x. Do I have another x up there? Yes. Which one? 7x. Seven 7x. Seven so if I combine those together, what do I get? Yeah. I get 10 of them. I'm just counting. I have 10 x's. Okay. Uh, I have a y up there. And I have another y there. Count those up. How many do I have? Eight of them. All right. And then these are my constant terms meaning there's not a letter attached to it. Uh, so something costs $10, something costs $5. I have no money in my pocket. How much do I owe? 15. 15, so now you 15. So I notice I did not try and solve for X or Y. I just combined like terms. And then I think that says number 19 as well. Can I clear this ink? Please. Okay. <coughs> Uh, number 19, we have parentheses x minus 12y plus 13 minus 3x minus 4y minus 11. Okay. okay, is there anything in front of my first set of parentheses that I see right off the bat? Uh, so I guess there would be a 1 there. So I can distribute that here, here, and here. So that's going to give me x minus 12y minus, or plus 13. Is that okay? What do I have in front of the next set of parentheses? A negative 1. So I'm going to distribute the negative 1. So that's going to change all of the signs. So I'm going to get minus 3x plus 4y plus 11. You see all where the signs switched? Combine like terms, x, negative 3x. What do we get? Almost. <coughs> negative 2x. Okay, and I have the y's. Negative 12, some cost $12, some cost 4, or I got 4 bucks. So negative 8y, good. And then, what do I got there? 24? Be done. I think I answered all the questions back there. Yep. Is there any others that came to mind where you're like, uh oh, I'm not getting it right away? Okay, so again, uh, most of you have completed the quiz. It's done, it's in the grade book. I think it was out of 29 points or 27 points. I can't remember exactly. It's in the grade book. Um, Basically, if you were showing your work and it looked like you're on the right path, but you couldn't add like three and five together for whatever reason, I gave you half the points. You know, I say you might have missed a half point. If it was just kind of either blank or it was like just completely wrong, uh, you missed one point. So they're all worth one point each. So someone had said, 
their graded drops a little bit lower because of the quiz. But realize the quizzes, though, even though I have collected a whole bunch of homework, like, let's just show you this. Let's say this entire area is CP algebra of the one. Okay? So that whole thing is going to indicate your grade. We'll call it a rectangle. So your homework is worth 20% of the grade. Okay, 20% of your semester grade. One fifth of this class's points come from the grade. Now, if I have one homework assignment or 10,000 homework assignments, it's still going to count for 20% of your grade. Make sense? And then so that would be like the homework category. And then you have the quiz category, which is slightly more. And again, if I have one quiz or 20 quizzes, that area is not going to change in size. And then you have your test category, and that's worth a little bit more. And then you have your final exam. And I think the final, we said it was worth 15%. I think this is 30%. This is 35%. 50, yep. So that's how it's going to work. So, so think about this. We have basically eight homeworks that we've done. Okay? So from the first homework, what this is doing, your homeworks are just going in, and you're getting a grade for that. Now, if you're getting four out of four on all your homeworks, that's going to count for 20. You have one of your categories towards your final semester grade that is worth 20%, and you're going to get 100% of that correct because you got four out of fours. And then the quiz category, if you mean it's worth a little bit more, it's going to reflect it. And then your test category is worth a little bit more code. So if you do poorly on a quiz or a test or don't do a perfect score, it's going to influence your grade. It's The more that we do, the less that one or two bad quiz scores would actually hurt your grade dramatically. It's just that having to be the first one. And then the final exam, which comes at the very end of the semester right before Christmas break. Okay? All right, let's, uh, let's do some notes. Hey, so I think today is about the last day that this packet's going to work for you. So please get over to the bookstore, the Bare Necessities, or Bare Essentials, or whatever. What is it called? Bare Necessities. Bare Necessities. And pick up book with 536. Looks just like that. It's four bucks. Let me know if there's a problem financially. Don't tell me in front of class. Tell me individually, and I'll make sure you get it. But I think tonight's homework will be the last one you could do out of this packet. Um, and I'll get you this packet. I, I got Yeah. Swap, swap already? I don't think it's a swap button. Oh, it's already ready? Yeah. Okay. Four bucks is going to break it. Okay. Okay. Let me know if it does. It's not going to break. Okay, cool. All right. Let's do a little math. PDF. Nope, I already did that. Word. All right. So let's start walking through some of these problems. So our first problem as a warm-up is 5 is equal to negative 2x plus 7. 5 is equal to negative 2x, 2x plus 7. Help me out. Talk to me. First off, are we going to solve this problem? And if so, how do we know? Yes. Why are we going to solve it? What's there? Go ahead. What's there definitely? There's an equal sign. So that sticks out saying, hey, I want to know what our unknown is. Uh, what should we do to both sides to start getting x by itself? Go ahead. Subtract 7. Subtract 7. Before I do that, what was the little skill I taught you? Draw that vertical line. That, oh, man, it's supposed to be red and it came out black. I don't know what happened there. Um, so we'll draw the vertical line. So you said subtract 7 from both sides. I like it. So that's going to give me... I have five bucks in my pocket, so I'm going to cost seven dollars in the store. Do I owe or get money back? I owe, so it's uh, negative two equals negative two x. What should I do to get x all by itself now? Divide by what? Negative. negative two. Make sure you bring the negative along. Negative over negative is positive. Two over two is one, so x is equal to one. Okay. And I realize I scribbled all over that page, but it should work out. 
that's it. All right, next problem. Next problem they gave us is 4y plus 2 is equal to 3. So vertical line it. That means the equal sign. What should I do to both sides to start? Are, are we solving this? What sticks out to solve? Equal sign. Okay, so what should I do? Yeah, let's subtract 2 from either side. I'm going to get 4y, those cancel out, is equal to 3 minus 2. 1. Cool. 4 times y is equal to 1. How do I get y all by itself? Good. Yawning with the divide by 4. I like it. Divide by 4. So I get y is equal to 1 fourth. Okay, can I leave a problem as, or a, an answer as a fraction? Yeah. Heck yeah. Okay. Some of you are like, dude, I can convert it to a decimal. I know. But it's fine if you do, but it's also okay if you leave it as a fraction. Is that okay? So again, this is just kind of a review of what we've been doing. Um, there was that quiz that I, I think I think overall, like we did, I feel pretty good about it. And there was just a couple things that I noticed, and that's where I'm focusing on the equal sign because some of you on the combined like terms <coughs> went and solved it, and it wasn't an equal sign. So I want, really want to make sure we curb that and uh, make make sure we make that correction for the test. Uh, last question, it's kind of hard to see, so I'll write it up here, is x over, or x minus 2 all over 6 is equal to negative 3. So vertical line, I like it. What's first? You're real close, but I have 6 on the bottom. Multiply by 6. Because that 2 is up on the numerator, or up on the top, I think if we multiply by 6, I think that's going to work nice. That cancels those out and leaves me x minus 2 uh, is equal to negative 18. And then what? Uh, subtract 2 or add 2. Add 2. Good. What did I do? It's calling me. Okay. So something costs $18 in the store. You have $2 in your pocket. Do you owe money? Or do you give money back? Owe money. How much? Owe 16 bucks. So negative 16. I like it. Feeling pretty good about this so far. I think after today, I think I'm gonna know how to do one step equations. I think. Maybe two step. I think you're the teacher though. Don't hold that against me. I'm really a Latin teacher. I just act like a drum kit. The drum kit goes on. Guys, this is a Latin teacher teaching math. Let's bring this down. To solve our to solve our equation, or to solve an equation, our goal is to what? Even both sides. Even both sides. What else? What is our goal? To solve an equation, what do we want to do? Find, x. Find what x is. What is another name for x? What's a good name for x? Variable. Variable means it could change from time to time, right? So, in order to solve an equation, we want to get x all alone. Now, is it okay if x is on the right side? And the left side, like, could I have an answer? Is tell me, it, and I'm, this is not this problem solved. But if I had x equals six and I had six equals x, do you think those mean the same thing? Yeah, and it's okay to have it frontwards or backwards. I don't care. It's not you're not changing in my mind what math is. Um, there are some teachers out there who'd be like, dude, don't do that, and you're like, really? Um, so. Basically, they have a little balance beam up here, or a scale, and uh, this might not be something that you've, you've dealt with often, but I did talk about the teeter-totter. But what you, add, what you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. It has to be the same. So to solve their equation, our goal is to solve for the variable. I think that would be okay to say. Or solve for x, or something like that. So get the variable alone. So if we were looking at that 2x minus 8 is equal to 3x plus 6, I, I need to start someplace. And I, I'm not quite sure where I want to start. Uh, does anyone want to shout out where we could start or a possibility? 
A line, okay. I like it. So this is our balance, teeter-totter on both sides. And remember what I do to one side of the equation, I have to do to the other side. So where do you want to start? Go ahead. Uh, minus 3x. Minus 3x, okay. See, I'm going to put I'm gonna put over here, I like that. And then you can minus 3x plus 2. Okay, okay. So I, that's definitely something I could do to both sides. I like it. Is there something else I could also do, though? You're, you're entirely right, but I want to see if we get our other stuff. Go ahead. I could add 8 to both sides. I like it. Is there anything else that we could do? Yeah. Subtract 2x. Subtract 2x. And last, <coughs> subtract 6. So all four of those are 100% accurate starting spots for this problem. Where does, it, where does your mind make it work? Your choice. There's not a right or wrong. Now some teachers will say, find the smaller of the x values and move that to the opposite side, keeping it equal. Or move, no matter what, move your x value to the left side. Because some teachers really want to have x over on the left side. And again, it doesn't really matter if the x is on the right side or left side, in my opinion. Now, when you get to geometry, that might be a little different, and it's okay. But I, I think if you can get down to 6 is equal to x or x equals 6, you've got the understanding of math down. Okay, so where should we start? What should we do? Which one of those four should we choose? I don't know. Being that our first one was subtract 3x from both sides, let's just go with that. Okay, not that because it's the most correct. That was just what the first suggested was. So I'm going to subtract 3x from either side. I'm subtracting 3x, I like it. Uh, that's going to give me, i got to bring it over here, I'm sorry. Negative x minus 8. Those would have canceled out, equals 6. Okay? Now, if you had done something different, that means it's going to look a little different, but at the very end, your answer should be the same. Uh, looking at what we have, what should I do next? Yeah. Add an 8, okay? So again, we have our vertical line. Add 8 to both sides. I like it. Uh, negative x is equal to 14. Uh-oh. What does that mean? Negative x equals 14. Is that okay? No, you want x equals. So what should I do to both sides? Divide by negative or multiply by negative. So if you multiply or divide by negative, it's just going to flip flop the signs. So you're going to find that x is equal to negative 14. And if we had done that with our teeter-totter, what you did on one side, or your balance scale, what you did to one side, you, you had to do to the other, and it would work out. Okay. Now, if you were to take this and plug back 14, you get 2 times negative 14 is negative 28, negative 28, minus 8 is negative 36. So one side would be negative 36, plug the negative 14 in, 3 times negative 14 is negative 42, add 6 to negative 42, you get negative 36 as well. Sweet, it worked. It's the key to unlock the door. Um, this is the math. This is where this math is actually applied, and you had no idea you were ever applying this. Any of you got a password or your thumbprint for your cell phone? Anybody not know what I'm talking about? That's this kind of math. That's this. Your password happens to be this. Now, it's not quite as simple on your cell phone as that. It goes through a little bit different iteration, but that's the thought process that your cell phone is indeed doing in order to let you to get in to get it. Same thing with like if your password on your email or your password um, to get into your school account or even your garage door keypad code. Those are all things that are that are working in this type of math to, to function that way. And I'm not saying this because I want you to sit and go out and be, you know design garage doors. I mean if that's your passion please by all means do it. Or designing cell phones again if that's your passion do it. Love it. Do you know do what you do well and and love it every day, okay? All right, get this out of here. Do we feel okay so far? So so far we talked about variables, variables of letter. That's on uh, could be on one side, could be on the other side, both sides, things like that. All right, let's move down. Woo. Someone's falling apart back here. Holy cow! Look at all those problems I have. Okay, uh, I don't think we have to do all of them, but I think we'd be okay. Problem number one, 6x plus 3 equals 8x minus 21. Someone give me a shout out where to start. Uh, the line, okay. Shout out where do we go? Subtract three. Subtract three. I like it. I saw your hand. Thank you. Subtract three from both sides. Love it. 
Uh, so I get 6x, 3's cancel, equals 8x minus 24. Okay, now what? Subtract 8x. Subtract 8x, okay, I like it. Subtracting 8x from both sides. Uh, that gives me negative 2x is equal to negative 24. What should we do? Divide by? Negative 2. And that's going to give me x is equal to, that should be a negative 2 right there, sorry about that. x is equal to 12. And if you were to plug it in, 6 times 12 plus 3 is going to give you the same answer as 8 times 12 minus 21. Okay. Uh, problem number 2. Draw a line. I have negative 6d equals d plus 4. Where do you want to start? Subtract d, I like it. So let's get, start getting the d isolated. So subtracting d, I get negative 7d is equal to 4. Then what? How are negative 7 and d being held together right now? It's not ionic and covalent. Being held together by multiplication, so division undoes it. So four over negative seven. Oh, I get the de the denominator negative. Is that okay? Yes, yeah, extra. So you should be last. Yes, you're gonna you're gonna have to add things to the answer to make sure you're last on that one. So you can call it. Just take in your last two, so you have to make sure you get it. It is, but you know you want it. It's okay. You're in the right place to be able to do that. All right. Um, I think we're pretty good with these. Uh, I think we could, if you wanted to, we could go over those a little bit more. But I think you guys have the basic idea. So with that, 5A, 5A is the worksheet out of the book to work on, or it's the very last page of the packet I did, gave had given to you. So again, if you could go over and get that book for four bucks from Bear Necessities and uh, figure it out. Um, a couple of you do have a couple of homework assignments to owe me, uh, so get them done so I can get you the 3.5 out of four. And a couple of you do owe me the quiz or needed to finish up the quiz. Um, so again, my office, I have a meeting right after this class for about 30 minutes, but then I'll be over there until today. Let's see, today, I think I'm actually going to head over to Grandview at around 1. Okay, so between 9.30 and about 1, I'm going to be in my office over there. Got it? Does everyone understand where that office is located? Sweet. So that is about all I have for you.